Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice and bright and early on a Saturday morning, but we've got some breaking news for you with regards to Arsenal's pursuit of Manchester City's Alexander Zinchenko. Now, according to Fabrizio Romano, Arsenal and Manchester City have come to a verbal agreement in principle, is the term he uses, uh, for a deal worth around about £30 million. Now, I thought that Arsenal were going to have to pay more than that. I said that I felt that City would probably look for about 40, that Arsenal would want to pay around 30. And in the end, hopefully, if everything went well, there'd be some sort of compromise and a negotiation that led to the meeting somewhere in the middle. But it looks as though Arsenal are going to get it more their way than Manchester City's, which is, of course, fantastic news. Uh, Zinchenko would be a great addition. We've talked about it throughout the summer you know at the beginning of the window we were heavily linked with Zinchenko and we talked about what a great fit he would be the versatility that he offers the experience that he brings to the table and the fact that he has a very strong relationship with Mikel Arteta gives me confidence that he can settle in at Arsenal pretty quickly um, so obviously delighted that, that this is something that's moving forward because it did go quiet for a long while and we believe that's because Arsenal turned their interest and their attentions towards Lissandro Martinez, who ultimately uh, we've missed out on. But the Zinchenko deal is moving forward. Now, according to Fabrizio Romano, that agreement has been reached, but there isn't quite an agreement just yet when it comes to personal terms. The salary and the length of the contract, he says, are the two key factors that need to be decided before this deal can go ahead and be completed. Now, we talked about it yesterday on the podcast. There is a feeling among a lot of people close to this deal, that Arsenal will get it done quickly enough for Alexander Zinchenko to jump on a plane and fly across to the States and join up with the team on their pre-season tour. And that would be brilliant, I think, because it would give him a, a, an opportunity, a chance to get to know everyone, to embed himself within the side, to understand the team's game model to understand some more of Mikel Arteta's ideas, which are not too dissimilar from the ideas under which he's been playing for a number of years. But obviously, there are some nuances, there are some differences. But if he could get out there nice and quickly, that would be brilliant, I think, and beneficial to everybody involved. Um, when I first heard that Arsenal had entered talks properly for Alexander Zinchenko, my first thought went to, can we agree a fee with City? as opposed to, can we agree personal terms with the player? I don't really envisage that being too much of a problem. Arsenal have shown that they're willing to be competitive in what they offer in salaries. And when people talk about uh, last January and how much of a failure it was, and I kept saying, so did a lot of others, that Arsenal needed to clear the decks in order to be able to go out there this summer and do business straight away without being limited by what they already had at the club and being limited by their need to move people out and get certain salaries and certain players off of the books. We did that. Did we suffer a little bit off the back of it? Yeah, maybe, but we've gone out so far. And if we get this deal over the line, we'd have had a really, really strong transfer window. You've got to say, um, you know, Marquinhos coming in, I think is a, a real prospect for the future. Fabio Vieira, I think people are sleeping on him. I think he'll have an impact next season. You know, William Saliba returns, Gabriel Jesus, obviously that marquee signing, Matt Turner to bring us some backup in the goalkeeping position. And of course, you know, I've mentioned Saliba coming back into that defence as well. So there's a lot to be optimistic about. And if we can get Zinchenko in as well, I think that would represent a really good window for the Gunners. I said to you guys a few days ago that I expected us to bring in two more Zinchenko is one of those. I still think we'll move for somebody else. And Fabrizio Romano spoke, didn't he, um, a, a couple of days ago in which he said that he expects Arsenal to move for a winger in the coming weeks. And I said to you guys that, to me, that felt like a bit of a non-committal statement. You know, we talk about those all the time during the transfer window. Journalists will say stuff that they believe has a strong chance of being true on the basis of what they've seen so far. We know Arsenal were in for a winger earlier in the window and so that suggests that they are still looking for one which then means that you can say in the coming weeks and make it quite broad and it might well prove to be accurate. Now I'm not saying that Fabrizio Romano doesn't know. I think we can all agree he's one of the most well-connected people in football but we're on course to deliver now what I thought we were going to deliver and that's another couple of signings before the transfer window slams shut. But Zinchenko is a great one. Versatility, 
experience, know-how. We've talked about that relationship that he already has with the Arsenal boss as well, and I think that's great. People will say, you know, how is it that Arsenal have gone out and got moving with this deal and ultimately are on course to get it done so quickly, whereas with other deals, you know, it, it, it just couldn't happen. It kept stalling and we were well below the valuations. This is the classic case of how if, if the stars align, a deal can be quite easy to do. But you have to have your limits and you have to have your lines. I mean, we had a clear line with regards to what we were willing to pay for Lissandro Martinez. And I think that was absolutely right to have because Manchester United are overpaying for him. Let's make no mistake about that. So this is a deal where the club were willing to sell. The player is seemingly willing to leave. And Arsenal's valuation is much closer, is much more in line with Manchester City's valuation of the player as opposed to some of the valuations we've had come back at us from various other clubs regarding various other players. So the stars have aligned a little bit here, and this is a deal that can be easily done. But you still got to give Arsenal praise for getting moving with it quickly. And this is a classic case of where, you know, you have to understand that not every deal is the same. You know, it, it, if you compare it to the Lissandro Martinez deal, because those are two deals regarding players that were probably going to play quite similar roles at Arsenal, you know, cover at left back, maybe from time to time. Um, you know, we heard that Lissandro was being eyed up as a left back more than anything else. But what I mean is a left footed player who's quite technically good, who can play in the midfield, who can play in the hot, in the defence, who can do all different things, who's relatively experienced. Although I'd argue that Zinchenko's CV reads a hell of a lot better. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you compare the way the two deals were moving, you had Ajax who have no need to sell because of the players that they've already sold this summer, because of the business that they've already done uh, this summer. Actually, they probably didn't really want to sell because of how thin it would leave that squad. You know, Eric Ten Hag has left and that squad has been dismantled by a number of clubs so far. Bayern Munich have been in there uh, doing a lot of business as well. So there was no real need to sell and they probably didn't want to, you know, whereas Manchester City have a player who's been there a few years, hasn't had as much game time as he'd like, probably is pushing himself for some guarantees over his future, which the club aren't able to give. They've just brought in Calvin Phillips, who's going to play in the midfield. Another player that will get in front of Zinchenko in terms of his preferred position. Um, Jao Cancelo has been someone that they've shown that they can play at left back as well. So again, that limits Zinchenko's time potentially more. And the, the two situations are completely different. Add to that, that Arsenal are much more aligned with Manchester City over what they feel that Zinchenko is worth. Whereas with Ajax, there was, there was just, there were two teams coming from two different directions uh, on that. And there was never really going to meet. Plus the competition. You know, the competition from Manchester United was really, really intense because it's clear that Eric Ten Hag wanted Lissandro Martinez and that relationship he already has with him was a problem for us. You know, we managed to gain Gabriel Jesus because we had a manager with a relationship with that player and it benefited us and it's why he came to us ultimately over a number of other clubs. In this situation, it's the same. You know, Zinchenko and Arteta have that existing bond. And so again we can benefit from that. But if you're going to benefit from those things, you have to accept that sometimes you're going to lose out to that factor. And we did lose out. That added um, to the, the problems that we faced with Lissandro Martinez, who's ultimately on his way to Manchester United. But I think this is a great signing. And I was very much behind this one earlier on in the window. The reason we stopped talking about it and the reason everybody stopped talking about it was because it didn't feel like a possibility. It didn't feel like something that Arsenal could get over the line. But they've gone back in for the player. They've been decisive in their in their actions. They've gone there. They've made the move. They've struck up an agreement verbally, at least for the time being, regarding the fee. And I don't think that personal terms are going to be a problem. I think this is a great addition to the side. And I'm hoping that in the next few days, we can get that all done and dusted. But yeah, that's the latest. Arsenal and Manchester City have verbally agreed a fee for Alexander Zinchenko in the region of around about £30 million. To me, absolute bargain. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll be back very, very soon with more. Until next time, take care.